This episode is sponsored by Brilliant.org. SpaceX Starship Update and NASA Artemis Progress Update. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And even one weekend is enough to fill another episode. There are so many interesting projects being worked on right now that it is just amazing. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates the Starship construction site in Boca Chica is exploding with activity right now. SpaceX is building a small city of new buildings and at the same time they're all hands on deck with the next generation Starship prototype, which already promises to be a whole different level of quality. SpaceX has been busy lately working on a second set of buildings at the shipyard. A second onion tent is already well into construction and should be finished soon. A second small tent is almost done now and a second windbreaker is being erected as you watch this episode. SpaceX has already started mounting the outer panels. The speed at which SpaceX is working on all of this is just incredible. Everywhere there is construction going on. In fact there is almost no spot where there is no work going on at the shipyard right now. All this is due to SpaceX's plan to make a second generation Starship fly possibly by the end of March. Even if SpaceX can't keep this date, it shouldn't be much later than that considering the activity level at the site. SpaceX is researching the missing puzzle tiles for this second generation Starship right now. As stated in the last episode, the main problem right now is the primary structure and particularly the tank domes. SpaceX's focus is on testing different types of construction methods, trying to find a working solution on how to build a Starship propellant tank out of stainless steel. And the second propellant tank is almost finished now and should get some testing soon. The last one reached 7.1 bars, so that's the mark SpaceX wants to pass to improve with every version they test until they find the tank that reaches the safety margin needed for a flight worthy system. Musk tweeted a picture of this second tank sitting in one of the main assembly tents. Here you get a very good picture of how much SpaceX's approach to constructing has changed from Mark 1. This now almost looks like a traditional assembly building. Everything is much cleaner, protected and in general an environment where serious work can be done. Looking back at Mark 1 from this makes it very clear why we did not see a launch last year. SpaceX tried but found out pretty quick that standards just need to be a bit higher for the end results to be anything meaningful. As said on many occasions though, the reason for SpaceX to have tried it on this very low level though, was not because they didn't know how to build rockets. They obviously do, if you look at the Falcon family and the Dragon vehicles. So one possible reason could be that SpaceX is trying to find the lowest possible standard. At which point does it work, but still costs significantly less than a traditional build? We're following SpaceX's journey towards that sweet spot right now. Is serial number one the sweet spot? We'll have to find out. By the way, to give you a size comparison here, the doors open up to 12 meters wide. So Starship parts will easily fit through. And SpaceX is not only working on one test tank right now. They're working on two of them as you can see in Musk's picture. One main tank test article and one for header tanks. Remember the nose cone we watched getting constructed recently? SpaceX integrated a header tank and moved it to the launch site for testing already. Early on Friday, SpaceX tried to start testing. They mounted it on a test stand, strapped it down and plugged fuel lines in. Recently delivered liquid nitrogen was used for this test contrary to the last main tank test, which was performed with water. One of the liquid nitrogen pipes had a problem though, as it seems. It's unknown if the leak was caused by a valve or the pipe itself, but SpaceX fixed it and continued testing the next day. On Saturday then, everything worked as planned and the nose cone was pressurized. The testing took several hours and while the assembly was sitting on the test stand, ice formed on the nose. Now this tells us that it's very likely that the header tank reaches all the way into the tip, as otherwise the ice would most likely not have formed all over the very tip of the nose. This is interesting as the round header tank we recently saw does not fit into the tip of the nose like this. So it's likely that the round tank is on the bottom of the cone shaped tank on top. Anyway, this is very different from the quick and dirty solution we saw with Mark 1, where the two bean-shaped header tanks were just basically stuffed into the nose as a quick solution with the batteries needed for the fins just slapped onto the side of the tanks. 
I really hope SpaceX will give us a look at how this nose is constructed on the inside. The test commenced without any problems. Then the next evening at around 8 pm local time, SpaceX pressurized the tank again. And this time it was all about making it burst. SpaceX raised the pressure all the way to a failure. Since the typical white vapor was missing from the rupture, it's likely that this second test was performed with water again. There is no official news yet if the tank reached SpaceX's expectations. If there is any news, I'll definitely have it on my Twitter. As mentioned before, the second test tank has already partly been assembled as well. In a cleaner and more protected environment, SpaceX is showing an incredible pace. Again, very similar to the last tank, the differences are in the details. This time, the lower dome has the improved welds between the segments in the middle ring and the upper dome seems to have a larger middle segment and seems to be a bit taller as well. Also, the different plates seem to be made of two parts this time, being separated by a bow-shaped weld in the middle. This is an approach we have not seen yet and it should be very interesting to see the test results on this one. Alright, I might be mistaken here, but it also looks a bit like they might have taken the needed steel for the middle ring out of normal ring segments. The two domes are already stacked and the roll lift has arrived at the shipyard. So we can expect a transport to the launch site rather soon and shortly after we'll see if this time the tank construction exceeds the needed limits. And this is what's happening in front of windbreaker number one right now. A new and sturdy jig is being built. If this has the right size, which is hard to tell right now, this could be the one for either the new nose section or the tank section for serial number one. It would be the right location if SpaceX is planning to assemble the new Starship inside the Windbreaker. I'll watch it closely and keep you updated as always. As said in the beginning, there is so much happening in Boca Chica right now that it is really hard to follow everything. There are so many things happening everywhere, incredible work by the crew on site. Each week that passes seems to speed up that process even further and there's just one thing missing right now. They haven't started stacking the hull. NASA Artemis Progress Update There is one more super rocket being built right now, SLS, and even though it is not reusable and way more expensive, it still is a very impressive engineering feat and once completed, it should be a sight to behold to see its first flight. Just recently, NASA workers have raised the first fully assembled SLS core stage onto the B-2 test stand at Stennis Space Center in Mississippi after it arrived there via the Pegasus barge from Michoud earlier this month. The SLS core stage is the largest rocket stage ever built by NASA, even larger than the Saturn V's first stage. It stands over 64 meters tall and measures 8.4 meters in diameter. It is equipped with state-of-the-art avionics, miles of cables, propulsion systems and propellant tanks that hold a total of more than 3.3 million liters of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen to fuel the four RS-25 engines during launch. Designed by NASA and Boeing in Huntsville, Alabama, the manufacturing at the NASA's Michoud assembly facility in New Orleans by lead contractor Boeing with input and construction from more than 1,100 large and small businesses in 44 states, the SLS core stage is now ready for its final tests before it will be shipped back to Kennedy Space Center for the Artemis 1 launch, scheduled not earlier than 2021. The tests performed on the B-2 test stand in the coming month include every system. Avionics will be tested. The thrust vector control will be checked and a simulated countdown including propellant filling will be performed and end just before ignition. In a final step then, the core stage will have to show what it's worth by performing an 8 minute burn of all four RS-25 engines. This will be quite the sight and if at all possible, I will do a live coverage of the event in a few months. With the SLS core stage on the test stand, NASA will have the proper foundation for their upcoming budget release on February 10th which includes a five-year cost estimate. NASA also right now is in the final steps of awarding initial lander contracts within the next two months and there is a lot of work to be done this year to get Artemis 1 on track. The plan right now is to have Artemis 1 reach orbit without crew or an Orion capsule. Then Artemis 2 will carry a crew into lunar orbit and finally Artemis 3 is supposed to send the first woman and a man to the lunar surface in 2024. NASA's approach is radically different from SpaceX's Starship with a rather traditional rocket utilizing components from previous launch vehicles. 
The RS-25 engine, for example, the large core stage tank structure and the two solid rocket boosters are modified parts derived from the shuttle program. In theory, this should make the Space Launch system a very reliable rocket. On the other hand, none of its components are reusable. On paper, Starship is the much more capable system, with more payload capacity, fully reusable and a lower price tag. SLS still though is a very impressive rocket. If SpaceX succeeds though, and NASA is willing to embrace new ways, we might see Starships land on the moon with NASA astronauts as well. Maybe even with a mission badge from Artemis 3 on their suits. Time will have to tell if SpaceX can make Starships reliable enough to send astronauts to Moon and Mars and these astronauts will have to have many traits and talents to be chosen for these missions. But what can you do about your own skill sets? What's a good way to expand your knowledge in an easy way? Today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, is a very good place to start widening your own horizon. Focusing on giving an accessible entry into some of the most difficult to understand topics, Brilliant.org is a teaching specialist. Most people I talk to about math and physics and about how the world works have told me that somewhere along the lines they lost track at school, making the topics harder to understand with each succeeding year. Why not pick up again with the right approach? Brilliant.org gives you the chance to pick up your learning where you left it, carrying you along in a fun and interactive approach that is very different from what you might have or still are experiencing at school. Interactive, innovative and smart, Brilliant can help you to fill in the missing links to be able to understand the bigger picture. You can refresh the basics in their course on math fundamentals or even go straight to classical mechanics or gravitational physics. To learn something new and at the same time support What About It, go to Brilliant.org and sign up for free to get access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So complete your bigger picture with Brilliant.org. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Has SpaceX finally found a good solution for their bulkheads and will Artemis 3 happen as planned? As always, tell me in the comments. Welcome to the Patron Shoutout, where I thank my patrons by showing them some love for what they're doing for What About It. As said so many times before, without them there would not be any What About It as you know it. Help, funding and research are essential for What About It, and working towards a common goal makes all of this possible in the first place. So show some love in the comments and maybe even consider becoming a patron yourself to help improve future episodes even further. And as always, there are new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Jeff Rauch, Desnes Guy, John Townsend, and many more. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. I got a snoring cat in the background. <laughs> Recording with me, the cat. All right, say bye, bye bye. <laughs> it's not sitting on the tent. Which was before the pop thing. Each week. <laughs> with more everything. Ah, <laughs> uh, nope.